French election, the, the, the president has been renewed, has been re-elected mm -hmm. quite easily. Not easily, but I mean, his, uh, the, the lady who was running after, uh, against him made 42% of the votes and he made 58. So that's this, fine. This is Marine, Marine Le Pen. Marine Le Pen, mm -hmm. she made 42%. Mm -hmm. Now, at the, uh, the elections of the, of, the, of the congressman, let's say, uh, the, 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 the House is divided in three parts. The main part is uh, the presidential people, you know, the people who follow Macron. But they don't have a majority. And the two other parts, one is extreme left, and the other one is Marine Le Pen and what they call here the right, but I don't think it's extreme right, you know, because they're, they are trying to disqualify Marine Le Pen by saying, you know, that she is, a, she is a fascist and the Nazi and everything, which is ridiculous because in fact, you know, she's, she's quite a normal politician, you know, and, and her program is, is, in my view, is, looks very much like a, like a leftist program, you know, like you, you would call it the, leftist or liberal or whatever in the States, you know, she wants to, she wants to, uh, to lower the, the, uh, the age of retirement. She wants to increase the salaries, you know, things like that, which is, you know, leftist uh, ideas. She's not at all, uh, but anyway, they try to disqualify her. But anyway, so this, this assembly, this, this parliament is not easy to handle because uh, they, he's going to have, the president will have uh, each time he wants to have a vote on a text, on a law or anything, he would have to try and find allies, you know, one way or the other. Uh, so they're going to give him some hard time. At the same time, the president doesn't really care because he's involved very much in European politics, you know, and he is uh, very much involved with the Ukraine uh, situation. Now, this Ukraine situation is, of course, a matter of concern for all Europeans because uh, uh, we hadn't had war uh, on European soil since 1940-45, you know? Right. And uh, we all, like idiots, thought that, uh, <laughs> that it was over, that we would never have it again. Well, we do. Right. We do. Now, there are, two, there are two ways to look at it. The, the, there's one part of the people like Henry Kissinger who say, okay, let's not make a world war for Donbass. Let's just, you know, uh, give the Donbass at least on a temporary basis to the Russians and let's make peace. But on the other hand, there's other people, especially in France and uh, much less in, in France and in Poland and in countries like that, who say, no, 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 we have to, and the Americans, of course, you know, like uh, the, Secretary of, of Defense of the United States, they, they are, their feeling is that we have to give as many weapons as we possibly can to Ukraine in order to weaken and, if possible, destroy the Russian army. Right. In my view, you know, it's okay, but th th this means that the war is going to continue for a long time. Right. Is it and, because Russia is, has a... Has a has a has a no no uh what would you call it no no end in sight policy like we're not going to give up well you see it's very difficult for someone like putin to accept the fact that he he says to these people okay i made a mistake i'm very sorry i have to apologize now i get the army back home and we leave ukraine alone then he looks like an idiot you know he he's he'll be the, he'll be dismissed the next day <laughs> So in fact, he is, he is taken into it. He, he can't back up. Mm -hmm. He can't, uh, you know, go backwards. It's a, it's a pride thing, huh? No, not pride, but it's also political. You know, he, he, he wants to stay in power. Okay. Like everybody else, you know. <laughs> right. Now, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky situation. It's a tricky situation. In my view, you see, if you go back to my theory, the mimetic theory, you know, uh, what is happening now is that uh, this war has built two mimetic rivals, Zelensky and Putin. 
and none of them wants to let go. No one's, no, none of them wants to stoop. Right. See, they, they both want to, you know, take advantage. Now, Zelensky has the full support of Europeans and especially of Americans. But, but, but uh, Putin has the full support of Chinese, Hindus, uh, many African countries, uh, Venezuela, Brazil, you know, all sorts of countries that represent many, many people. Right. I mean, billions of people. Yeah. So uh, in my view, uh, from, from the mimetic rivalry point of view, I would like to stop this rivalrous situation and bring everything down and make some kind of a peace. Because you see, in my view, if they make a ceasefire on the frontier as, as it is now, like Putin has conquered the Donbass, okay, we make a ceasefire and we negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. You know, we can negotiate eight years, 10 years, 15 years. In 15 years time, no matter what, Putin will be away, will, will be gone. He's over 70. So, yeah. so, so uh, by that time, we can always make things better. But I don't think that it's worth for recuperating the Donbass to push the Russians to, a, to an atomic uh, nuclear war. Because that's where we're going. Yeah. Now, from a, from a, from a, from a cultural standpoint, though, some might say that um, the West is is sort of given up on its traditions and its you know um, faith base, right? Like uh, Christianity and stuff, and that you know Russia is trying to hold on to that and not let the you know sort of secular view of the world creep into to absolutely. Europe. I think that that's Russia. another key. That's another key issue. You see. Putin and the Russians still have or still want to preserve a certain uh, view of the sacred, I would say. Mm -hmm. You know, things for them are sacred. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Europe, there is nothing sacred anymore. Right. And uh, especially in France, you see, mm -hmm. in France, uh, they have this. I don't know how to say that in English. They, 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 they keep the huh? atheist. Yeah, they, they, mm. they, they proclaim that they are laic, laic, which can be translated both in 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 in, in English and in Arabic for that purpose mm -hmm. as atheists. Okay, we are yeah. atheists. Right, and of course, Putin cannot respect somebody who says he's an atheist and he says and he says what are your values what are your values and they say our values are uh, we want to uh, to promote lgbt you know lesbian uh, homosexual and everything and when when putin and the muslim countries hear that they just go wild because <laughs> they say that's not our values Right, right. Because our values are completely different. Mm -hmm. So there is a big, big, uh, how should I say? There, there, there is a big fight over values and over the notion of the sacred. Mm -hmm. And uh, for instance, uh, you see in, 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 in Russia, you cannot insult the, 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 the patriarch or Christ or God or whatever. Mm -hmm. but in France, you can in the Catholic uh, circles. Mm -hmm. But again, in France, you know, there is a good portion of the people who are now uh, Muslims. Mm -hmm. And uh, they cannot tolerate the Prophet Muhammad to be insulted. Mm -hmm. They think if this is a sacred matter that they, they cannot take it. Mm -hmm. So you see, there is already inside France, you know, a very big gap between two visions of civilization. Right. And... Uh, so it's, it's a very tricky situation. And I think that, as I said again in, in another interview, I said the main thing now is to try and find out what is our main goal. Mm -hmm. If you decide that the main goal is to destroy the Russian army, then of course that's one thing. 
But if you decide that the main goal is to bring back peace and stop killing people on each side, you know, both the Ukrainians and the Russians have had 20,000, 30,000 people killed in each part. It's many people. Of course, it's much less than the Second World War, but still. And uh, if, if, if the, the, the idea is, I said, you know, my, 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 my word was that, okay, we can give weapons to Ukraine, but let's give them also a peace plan mm. along with the weapons. Right. And uh, I think this is very much what the Henry Kissinger suggests. And of course, Henry Kissinger is a very experienced diplomat. I mean, he, he's not a his spring chicken, you know. He's like 96, he, right? Yeah, yeah, he is 96, but he has also a fantastic experience as Secretary of State, as politician, as as, as you know, as he's a not as he's not as aggressive as those young bucks like George Soros. No, George Soros is something else. Yeah. He's a young buck. He's still got that young buck energy, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> George he wants Soros. to get involved with everybody's affairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you see, it's it's such a tricky thing, and I'm very much concerned about this situation because I think that everybody is led by emotion and passion rather than by logics. I wanted to ask you about what uh, the election in France. What what about Zemmour? What happened to him? Well, <laughs> Zemmour, you see, had uh, I, I've I've had a few meetings with him, and uh, like interviews. You've done interviews with him? Or? No, I mean, you know, it was lunches, you know, organized, you know, to where he was invited, you know, 20, 30 people, fifty people, and he would give us a lecture, and then we could ask questions, you know. Was this before he ran or, or when he was a journalist? Before and yeah. while he was running, yeah. while he was running. Uh, you see, the Moore's problem was that in the beginning, he went up very fast, very fast. He, he was credited like 18, 20% of the votes in the September, October, November 21. But then, he unfortunately started saying that we should have good relations with Russia. But then when Russia invaded Ukraine, he was treated as a traitor, mm. as, as a Russian agent, you know, which he's not. He, he was only saying that Europe should have closer relations with Russia in order, in his view, to dis... Uh, I say, to dissociate Russia from China. He said, we Europeans have no interest in pushing Russia into the Chinese arms, which makes sense in a way. Yes. Now there's another problem with Zemmour. Of course, his main, his main idea was that France was going to be overwhelmed, invaded by North Africans and Africans, all of them Muslims, and that in a few years time, there would be nothing left of the French culture and will be a, a Muslim country. Uh, he, I think he has a point because the left, the, the, all the leftists and even Macron consider that, you know, immigration is a good thing. I don't think, you know, the, the, the excessive immigration, I think it's a danger. I think it's a really danger because, as I was saying earlier on, uh, you know, the Muslims that come in do not have the same values. They don't have the same idea about the sacred. And they certainly do not want to, to accept the fact of becoming atheists. Right. Like, the, like the French would keep saying, you know, that they... they Nothing religious should be mixed and so on. Whereas in America, for instance, this is, France is about the only country in the world that's in that situation, that frame of mind. Look in America, you, have, you take a, a, a $1 bill or a $100 bill, what's written on it? In God we trust, right? Mm -hmm. That would be impossible in France. Yeah. You, you go to England, you see the Queen of England is the head of the church, of the, of the Anglican church. She goes to mass. 
she yeah. she she keeps you know talking to the priests and the cardinals and the, the, the archbishops and so on. You go to Spain, the, the king of Spain is, is, is a very Catholic uh, uh, monarch. You go to all those countries, you know, whereas uh, France is like isolated. But, but do, you, do you think, because for me, I, I, I would say, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I would say that, um, you know, with all these countries, you mentioned, you know, the United States, uh, Great Britain, Spain, for me, I feel like it's more symbolic rather than actually really, really meaning what they say. So we say we we in God we trust, but we don't actually believe that. Act, you know? Yeah. No, I think maybe you believe, mm -hmm. but you most of the time do not act accordingly. Okay. okay. You see right. what I would say. <laughs> whereas, okay. whereas you see, uh, uh, and as I said, you know, in, in between. Europe, especially France and uh, some countries, mm -hmm. but very few, they have different values than Russians. And they certainly have different values from all the Muslim countries that are now moving as immigration into Europe. Mm -hmm. And I think that if this continues on this path, uh, Europe will be absolutely flooded with, with, with Africans and so on. Not that, uh, I'm not saying that they are bad or good. I'm right. just saying that they are different. Yes. And that, and that uh, you know, what Zemmour's idea was that Zemmour was saying, let's preserve the French tradition, the French language, the French, uh, you know, uh, literature and so on, the French language. Right. Whereas all these people, they, they don't care. They, they they want to destroy all that. They think that the French culture is just as good as any other one, right. which, of course, is is true in, in, on, on, on a very large you know, scale. But as a matter of fact, people who believe in French culture, you know, are very attached to it. Right. Yeah. You know, and I personally uh, have a, a belief that in fact people do not live in a country or in a place; they live in a culture. I know many people who live in the French culture and live physically in South America, Africa, Canada, whatever. Right. And I know many people who live physically in France, but who do not live in French culture. Mm -hmm. They live in a very different culture. And this is bound to bring about big problems. Right. Because if you do not share the culture of your neighbor, then you don't have the same reactions. Right. I'm here, you see, in Switzerland, and I see the difference. The Swiss people have a completely different culture. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, here you have security, order. Right. It's, uh, it's, it's very strange. Yeah. It's very strange. Is that, is that the impact of Jean Calvin? <laughs> May, maybe. <laughs> it's also, it's very interesting because, you see, Switzerland has three cultures mixed. Mm -hmm. There is this, this, the, the German Swiss, the French Swiss, and the Italian Swiss. Mm -hmm. Why can they live together? Because they have decided to share the same values and none of them is fanatic. Mm -hmm. In other words, they, you know, there is no fanaticism you know, either on the Catholics, uh, the Italian Catholics, or the French Calvinists, or the, or the German Lutherians, or whatever. They respect each other. Right. And they think, and also they are very, very consistent. In other words, for instance, in France, the, the tax laws change like every year. In Switzerland, they haven't changed for the past hundred years. In Switzerland, once you stay here and you sign an agreement with the with the with the, with the IRS, you know, with, with the tax people, they would never change it. Mm -hmm. Whereas in France, you cannot do that because they will change it every year. They will increase it, of course, every year. <laughs> right. Right. So I think there's a uh, 
Switzerland is a very interesting country to look at. Because then you see that you can actually make people live together if they decide to leave, to not, not, to be, not to be too fanatics about their beliefs and so on, and to share what, is, what they have in common. I believe that Zemmour and, and Le Pen both got a younger vote, and Macron was more of an older demographic vote. So it's interesting that the youth of France are trending in the direction of what you're suggesting they share in those values, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the 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 young ones in France have no culture at all. They can they 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 speak French very poorly, and they are encouraged to do that by the woke culture. You know, they they uh, they want to change the language. You know, uh, to make it both men and women, and so on, so on, male and female. You know, and that makes the the the, the French language. Difficult to understand. You mean like the the pronouns or whatever it is, like the yeah yeah yeah. L and yeah, for, yeah. Okay. for instance, uh, the, the prime minister now in France is a woman. Mm -hmm. Well, fifty years ago, if she was a woman, they would still say she is the prime minister. Right. Now they say she is the prime ministress or something like that. You know, so she is she is the you know they 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 they, they feminize the title. Okay. Right. It's okay, but uh, you know, it's gradually it's it it, uh, and also it dissociates it dissociates the, the present situation from the French history because France hasn't existed for two years or five hundred years; it's been there for two thousand years, and so they, they just erase everything. And now they start something new. Yeah. They want to do something new. They want to, you know, forget about their traditions, their religions, their Christianity. Christianity, you cannot say. Christianity has been one of the main bases of the of the European culture, whether we like it or not. Christianity, not, not, not only Catholicism, but Lutheranism, Protestant, Protestants, and so on. They have been actually structuring the, the European culture for thousands of years. So now if you just want to dismiss all that, I think it's, it's, it's dangerous because the people that come in as, 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 as immigrants, they have, they have, a, they have a culture uh, which is very different and they are very attached to it. Yeah, They're that's very, like the, the Davos globalism is like a mimetic rival of Christianity, right? Competing. Exactly. What do you think about that Schwab guy, those guys? What, what, what are they up to? The Klaus Schwab, the guy that runs the, DAV, the World Economic Forum? What are, they, are, they, are they the same worldview as Macron, or is that something different that's mutated out of that crowd, or what? He, he walks know, around I'm, Schwab, I'm Klaus Schwab. Do you know that name? No, I don't. I don't I'm not familiar with that. He's an older gentleman that that runs the Davos crowd, the World Economic Forum group, and he oh, dresses. Davos, yes, 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 he yes, dresses yes, yes. like he's in Star Trek episodes. He's got this purple outfit on, and he looks. I'm like, what is this guy up to? Strange, transhumanism. Yeah, well, I, I tell you, I think that uh, many people who run the world actually now are completely crazy. <laughs> you know, they, they they have they have lost a certain sense of. Uh, reality and as i said earlier on they are moved and they act only by emotions and feelings rather than by thinking and 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 realizing and analyzing being logic in fact they are they 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 fun function with ideology rather than looking at reality see for instance, the French people now, one of the things they want is to have a universal revenue. In other words, to all the French people should be paid without working. Right. And I've written a book about that saying that uh, if, if you tell people not to move because they need to rest, yeah. then the muscles will be atrophied. Mm -hmm. Muscles will be, you know, and, and then very soon they won't be able to move very much. And if you do not make people work and exercise their brain,
their brain will be also atrophy. They, 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 they become stupid. You know, men, men and, and women need to have a certain meaning to, to their lives. Mm -hmm. If they have just money for doing nothing, they just, they, they don't do anything. They, 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 they are nothing. They become they, nothing. They become like the entertainers you see on the television, these musicians. <laughs> I tell David right. that that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, those people, they are just, you know, just want to have fun and, and, and play, mm -hmm. but you can't, I mean, I don't think it's, it's, a, it's a positive thing for a civilization mm -hmm. to be a civilization of, uh, of, of, of just uh, playboys or playgirls. <laughs> right, right, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, I, I want to ask you a question about uh, how your ideas are being received in the French world of psychology. I mean, are you, are, is your mimetic psychology taking off? Is it, is it still going? Is it still being debated and thought about, or have you been pushed out or, I mean, what's the, I don't know what's going on there. Well, I think I'm, I'm not very much in the center of the preoccupations. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, pushed out. But it's becoming to sink. I mean, I have been uh, giving many interviews and uh, they have made films about me and uh, my last book, uh, Alterity, Alterity, has just been published by uh, Michigan State University Press. Uh, it's been translated into English and published. Another book which I had written called The Work That Heals. The Work That Heals has also been translated in English, but it will not be published in paper. It will be just put on uh, YouTube. Oh, wow. Okay. And it's called The Work That Heals. Mm -hmm. uh, like an audio book or? Uh, no, it's, it's, uh, it will be uh, written, but it will be not, not on paper. It will be on, on, uh, on how should I say, on the screen. Okay. Uh, for some reason, for some reason, because they didn't find any publisher in the States, but, but my book Alterity called Alterity is in the process of being now published. It's been translated and it's been going to be published by Michigan State University Press. You can, I'm sure you can get it on Amazon or whatever. Yeah. Should come any day now. Okay. What's that about so for, think, for people? Because I remember you talking about that. Tell us a little bit about that book. Who? Can you tell us a little bit about that book? Yeah, uh, in that book, I'm criticizing the fact that now the trend, at least in France, is that we must build ourselves. We must promote ourselves. Uh, we have to develop our own self, you know. And my, my, th my idea is that we, we, we neglect to take into consideration what we owe to the other. Okay. Right. You know, we, first of all, we owe life to our parents. Mm -hmm. And then we owe our desires, our first desires, our first movements to our parents. Mm -hmm. We didn't decide to send ourselves to school. They did. Mm -hmm. We imitated their, 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 their talk, the way they talked mm -hmm. and their, their verbs and, and their, their their language, and if, if you've been brought up by American parents, you speak English. If you've been brought up by French parents, you speak French, or Japanese parents, you speak Japanese. And that's not your choice. Right. That's coming from the other. And of course, in the Girardian theory of mimetic desire, every desire you, you have, or which, in which you're taken, involved, is suggested by the other. And what is the key issue is that you have to avoid, I mean, uh, you have to make sure that the model that you have, you know, taken and from which you're copying your desire should not be evolved into a rival or an obstacle. There's another way, of course, there's another part of the book in which I try to explain that this situation, you know, the discovery of the mirror neurons by the Italian team in Parma 
And the fact that now we know that our brains are connected to each other in a mimetic way, and that if I see you doing something, my brain, uh, you know, uh, in my brain, the same, the same areas light up and start working, getting ready to do the same thing, even if I don't do it. See? And so this entails two key questions. One is the responsibility of the models, especially the models that are compulsory, that are imposed upon us. First of all, the parents. The parents should behave in such a way that they build up the child and don't humiliate him or make him stupid by screaming at him or beating him up all the time. One. And then the, the professors in the schools, they also have to have a certain behavior that they serve as a model to the students and not behave like idiots, you know, or just play and, and, and laugh and so on. They should be dressed in a way, you know, that entails respect. Also, the, the politicians. If the politicians start displaying the fact that, they, you know, they, they, they have a... They steal, they, they, they don't respect anything, they, they just do anything wrong, then they, they are giving the, the wrong image, the wrong, they are being the wrong models. That's, so the, the responsibility of the model should be stressed, but also the responsibility of the, of, the, of, the, of the individual, of the imitator. What is his little space of freedom? Because he is compelled to imitate. His little space of freedom is the choice of the model. He can choose, for instance, to take, let's say, Obama as a model and not Bin Laden. And that will entail a whole behavior in his life that will be very different if he chooses Obama or whoever or, or Bin Laden. Yeah. So that's very important to see. And the second thing is that the path to wisdom is to make sure that once you have chosen a model, you never, you, you make sure it never evolves into a rival. Okay. And that applies especially in couples. Yeah. Because in couples, it is absolutely bound to happen that over a period of, let's say, a day, there will be times when they will think of each other as great people, you know, much in love, you know, and fantastic and so on. We're absolutely so happy to be together. And other times, you know, when they will be mad that, you know, they, they will quarrel over something stupid, like uh, I want to go to the, to swim and, and no, I want to go to the movies, you know, the, things like that. And I think that the wisdom is to be completely aware of the fact that never to, to treat the, 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 the rival the, the, as a devil, because he is going to change and he's going to be you know, a god. And when he is a god, not to treat him really as a god because he is liable to change and become a devil. So make it, everything should be relative. Everything right. should, be, should be tampered. Everything should be handled with care, wisdom, and nothing should be final. You know, it's, nothing it's, should be final. It's interesting that you made that point because I, I was gonna, um, I wanted to ask you about the breakdown of the family and fatherhood and marriage. You know, um, we're, we're seeing here, you know, in, in the West, uh, a sort of uh, trying to take away the emphasis of fatherhood and, you know, role models for, for, for young men, you know, and things of that nature. How, how can we sort of reintroduce that into our society? You know, that being a father is a good thing, you know, being a husband, um, you know. Now, now it, it, this, is, this is very much, this is very much criticized and attacked, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, 
the image of the father is very much criticized because they say that in fact, it is the woman that is most important. Mm-hmm. I'm not denying that. And you know, so actually for the, for the past, since the beginning of the world, you know, the family has been built on the conjunction of a man and a woman who would produce children, the man having the role of being the protector, the provider, the the role model in in, in many aspects of life, and the woman being the the caring, you know, the the love, the, the, uh, the image of charity and love and and respect and uh, whatever. This is now in in the process of being destroyed. Uh, And I'm not sure this is going to be positive. They think it's a a major uh, breakthrough in culture, you know, to make men marry each other and women marry each other. I'm not very sure about that. Because... uh, First of all, in, it is funny because in my view, let me be a little bit vulgar, this theory fucks up psychoanalysis. <laughs> Don't forget that, you know, psychoanalysis, the Freudian theory is entirely based on the uh, Oedipus, Oedipus triangle the father, the mother, and the child. And if you say that there's no more father, no more mother, and everybody is the same, and it could be two fathers or two mothers or whatever, there's no more psychoanalysis possible. Right. So what are you left with? Is the only way now to build a new psychology that would be sound would be to adopt the mimetic psychology because the mimetic psychology doesn't suppose you know either man or woman. It's just right. mimetic. Yeah. <laughs> so, so in in that respect, uh, you know, I could I could be, I could be rejoicing. <laughs> yeah, right. It could, you were right. <laughs> I could be happy, but I'm not. I'm not because I think that we need to have some solid references, and if we fuck up everything, I don't think it's it's a positive thing. I don't know. It's, we're, we're in a very complicated world. Never in the history of mankind such fundamentals have been questions. Mm-hmm. Never. Mm-hmm. You know, for instance, uh, there was uh, the leftists and the rightists and the, the so on and so forth. But there was never a question of men should not be men and women should not be women and children should not be children. The child now in France should be given the opportunity to choose what he learns, what he wants to learn. How can he choose? He doesn't know anything. <laughs> right. You know? Right. How can he choose whether he wants to learn history, geography, mathematics, mm-hmm. or whatever, since he doesn't hear, he hasn't heard about it before? Mm-hmm. How can he ever choose? You have to teach him something first, and then he may eventually, eventually, when he has completed his scholarly work, he can eventually think, ah, I'm more attracted by mathematics or geometry or geography or politics or history or theology, but not before. (laughs) The second thing is, in France, and this is, in my view, monstrous, they now give the opportunity to very, very young children to decide what sex they want to be. No, we got, we got that here too. <laughs> yeah. So you, they take, for instance, a, a, a young boy, five, six years old, mm-hmm. because he wants to play, he puts a, a dress on or he wants to play with a doll. Mm-hmm. And they put in his brain that he's fact inside himself, actually he's a woman. But and that, what it becomes terrible, and have we have seen some cases here, you know, they operate him. Mm-hmm. They remove his testicles and penis and everything, 
and they flood him with hormones to make him pe feminize. And then uh, 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 a boy recently has has made an issue about that. You know, he has sued the, the his family and the government because he said, you know, now that I'm 18, I feel I'm a man, and 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 you've deprived me of all my. My, my 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 manhood. I mean, uh, you you I, you you've made me a monster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one of the one of the things that Zemmour uh, was emphasizing during this campaign was this: that we should not interfere with the choice of the sex of a child before eighteen years old. Once he's eighteen, if he feels that he is a woman, or if the woman feels she's a man, fine. Yeah. And you've seen this very funny story about this man becoming a woman and then taking part in, 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 in a competition of, of swimming, you know, with women. And of course, he, he was beating everybody else because he, he was stronger. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. And the women were, were, were you know, were, were, were protesting, saying, you know, this guy is, 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 uh, is not fair. <laughs> so we're we're running into into ridiculous situations, right? And that's not very it's not very constructive for the civilization. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Well, my my last my oh go ahead please. No please. Okay. My last my last question um, will be or my last comment would be this: uh, as far as fatherhood and, and we talking about you know manhood and stuff. Do you think that uh, in terms of fatherhood and the, and the the father being the head, maybe in Western society, men have forgotten to place God above themselves, right? Like the father has forgotten to place God above him, right? As in the same way the Bible says, you know, the father is the head of the house, you know, wives obey your husbands, right? But husbands ought to obey God, you know, lower them. Absolutely. I think, I think this also was uh, one of the things I said in my book, Alterity, you know, that we have cut off transcendence. In other words, we think we can build ourselves. We're, we've forgotten that we have been, you know, life is something which is a gift from God. It's not something we've created. So there's God who's created the parents and the parents have created the child. And so all this has to be, you know, built gradually. Mm -hmm. But now if you remove God, and if you say that we have generated or produced our own selves, and after that, what happens is that now, of course, women have big, you know, big responsibilities. They make more money than men and everything. So gradually, the men, so many couples I see now, the man does the cooking and the cleaning and the thing, and the woman goes to work. In the office, you know, and so of course the children get puzzled because they think, you know, uh, you know, so, so it's, it's a very <laughs> the, strange thing. <laughs> yeah. you, you see that also in the states, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know. You know let, let me tell you a little funny story. Uh, I have a French a friend who's a, uh, you know, the, the head of a big company. Mm. He went to Sweden to meet the, the head of the company that he was working with. And she happened to be a woman. Mm. And of course, he, he as, a, as an old Frenchman, you know, with his traditions, he came and he tried to kiss the hand of the woman, you know, and then when they walked out, he opened the door and, you know, he said, please. And, and, so. and then there was the Swedish guy came and told him, listen, you will never be respected if you behave like that. You have to, you know, go first across the door and then slam the door in her face. Then she will know that you're a man. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's lots of funny things happen. <laughs> and the only thing that's left for us who witness all this disaster is laughing. <laughs> I'm glad to see that you that you agree with me and you join me in that. <laughs> yes, sir, yes. <laughs> Laugh and give it to God. That's you know, just yeah. 
<laughs> because there's nothing else we can do. Yeah. Because we, we have no influence. We have no influence. Mm. Mm. But I think, and, I think, uh, I think this proves the mimetic hypothesis that when you get rid of sacrifice, eventually societies will become completely undifferentiated, but unlike the ancient times, that undifferentiation will not be closed off within a festival, but rather festival will become the new normal. Exactly. Exactly. Festival. Exactly. We are living in the new normal of festival. So we're all clowns now. That's why they call it clown world. Right. Exactly. And fortunately, and people like me, you see, they have asked me on television whether I had planned, I had planned to write more books. And my answer was, no, I don't think I have any more stamina. I don't have motivation because the world that I'm in now is not my world anymore. I'm very sad about that, but uh, let's laugh about it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Well, I don't know if David has anything else you want to say. No, uh, I'm I'm good. Okay. No, I am good too. It was it was very nice seeing both of you, and uh, and thank you, Shannon, for your for your uh, interview. I, it, it was very interesting. I think we. I think. Uh, what is refreshing is that we seem to agree on a number of points. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think I think we're we're, but I, I won't get I won't get mimetic. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, boys. Okay. <laughs> See you. Bye bye. Okay. Nice seeing you. Nice seeing you. Bye bye. All right.